Not quite yet. Oh, almost. Oh. We'll there we go. We're live. There we go. <laughs> Always in control. Basically representing that PlayStation yeah, as usual. I think. <laughs> how much are they? How much are they uh, paying you now for that uh, PlayStation sponsorship? Oh, they're just sending me uh, a few, a few, you know, toys. <laughs> a few pennies. Yeah. <laughs> sex toys a few, don't a few, count. A few, <laughs> Damn it! How did you know Sony was making sex? That's supposed to be re revealed in the next PlayStation event. Oh God! That gives a whole new meaning to PlayStation. Well, it's called it's called the joystick, and it does have a rumble pad. Stop. <laughs> uh, how, how you guys, guys doing, doing, man? It's been a long week. Oh. I haven't seen oh, you in a week. Awesome. And and you know what? Whenever I see you guys, it just feels like yesterday. I'm really, really happy to be here, man. I've been thinking about this show since I got up this morning. And, uh, you know, we got a lot to talk about. Lots of really fun things going on in the game world, especially in the game that my friend Briar Rabbit is balls deep in. We're probably for the last two years or so. Uh, what have you guys been playing this week, man? Robbie? Go ahead, oh. Robbie. Oh, okay. It's not a secret. <laughs> this is Beastly no, Thoughts Live. Yeah, so this week, basically, I have been playing nothing but Destiny. Like, I am in love with the game again. <laughs> I am absolutely hooked, and I know Briar's already happy. Every that. week, you come on this show, and you talk about how we you're playing Destiny. Shit. Play something else, for God's sakes, Robbie. <laughs> no, I'm playing Destiny, yeah. Well, well Robbie, as somebody, somebody who hasn't played Destiny in a while, I've kind of drifted away from it. Tell me about how that you know experience kind of pulled you back in, and what, if any, changes have you recognized, and how are you feeling about the game? as it stands right now uh yeah i mean the main reason i came back to destiny of course is because rise of iron is basically coming out tomorrow night which i am incredibly excited for because i love destiny i mean i don't play it every single day i do after new content comes out but i always love the game and i definitely grind it hard as soon as an expansion comes out and i just i was really excited to get back into it and i'm loving the game everything about it pve doing strikes i did king's fall finally for the first time did the whole thing not just part of it which was awesome i had a blast with that doing crucible like the game just it has something to offer for everyone man and that's what i've always loved about destiny even when i get a little tired of it and i take breaks from it i still love the game deep down i definitely do and really enjoying it <sighs> I, I have to concur there. Um, there's not. I can't even think of a game, honestly, that every time new DLC comes out, I feel like it is a must-play moment in my life. Destiny is that thing. I haven't followed Destiny nearly as much as my co-hosts, uh, but I will be getting Rise of Iron tomorrow, and I will be playing it. Uh, it th that's for just clarity's something sake, that, it's not coming out tomorrow. It's coming out Tuesday morning. Yeah, okay. It's well, not like I'll a just, midnight release where it comes out like Monday night. It's Tuesday morning for me. It's five a.m. Tuesday me, morning. Yeah, for Robbie, it's three a.m. Yeah, yeah. It's well, it's Tuesday morning. Well, what I'm going to do then? I'm going to set my clock back twelve hours so I actually end up buying it tomorrow by my time. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's what okay. I'll do. But I'm looking forward to it. Uh, there, like I said, there's really not any game that I've played over a two year period. I can't even think of one. As many games as I have. That every single time new DLC comes out, it's a must-play event in my house. Yeah. My wife has to do it. I have to do it. We got to see what new story content comes out. We got to see raids. We got to see everything. And it's been a damn long time since I've gotten to Destiny. My wife actually played it uh, day before yesterday, and she was like, "Wow, it just feels so new all over again. It's just been so long since she's gotten into it. And now that it's it's here upon us, I will definitely be playing that." Really, really excited. Uh, and, of course, I'll try to get in there with you, Briar, if I can, one of these days. Yeah. Woo. Now, Yeah, baby. Now, I uh, have actually been playing for a solid week now, or a little bit over a week, about a week and a half, uh, Overwatch on PS4. And Finally. I know this game's... This game is a little. A little late this game to the party. is a little. Yeah, I'm a little late to the party. But you guys know me. I'm always late to the party because I got such a, a huge backlog of games to play. Yep. And I, that free weekend that came out, I played it on my Xbox One, and I was like, "Holy shit, this game!" It brought back the whole feeling of nostalgia I got from the beta. And after that free weekend was over, I went on the PlayStation. I was looking at it, and I was able to get it for I think thirty thirty three dollars during great. the sale. I pay. I paid for it, and I've been playing it ever since. And let me just say this: as a hardcore Last of Us Online fan, this this might be the only game I played in the last couple of years that has had the pull to pull me completely away from the Last of Us. Not saying I won't go back to the Last of Us, but there's so much to do in this game. I can't believe 
that people have gone, gotten into this game and just kind of stepped away. Each character has their own unique move set. It's so many different ways to play, and, and getting the, the move of the game is just so incredible. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to play more of it. And hopefully I'll catch up to you guys with the new shit relatively soon. But have, right have now, you played any of the competitive side of it? No. you got to be level 25. I'm level 20 okay. right now. Yeah. yeah, so when I hit 25, that's when I'll, I'll get competitive. But right now, I'm, I've narrowed it down to about three or four characters that I really, really, really love. Uh, and I'm trying to uh, – I like May. Mm-hmm. She's probably my, my favorite as far as when it comes to defense. She is and, so and annoying, though. Oh, she is man. so mad. She's badass. Uh, Diva mm-hmm. is, is my favorite when it comes to uh, you know attacks. She's very offensive. Uh, I like Widowmaker. And let me see who's the fourth. Um Bastion and for yeah, Bastion. everybody knows everyone knows why Bastion I haven't really got into the samurais too much uh, Hanzo and whatnot I'm, I'm more of a you know I try to keep a little bit of distance between me and the other other players but geez when it comes to my favorite two right now it's definitely May when it comes to that ice she's so de- I mean I've literally taken on entire teams by myself with this character mm-hmm. she can create that giant ice wall you get surrounded and of course she can re- regenerate her health make an ice wall again freeze people it's insane and yep. to me diva has the complete package she has the ability to fly and go wherever she wants she has a shield she gets up close to somebody it's pretty much over and her ultimate is fucking insane it has the, the widest birth of damage of any ultimate in the game, and if you pull it off right, you can really, really save a team. I'm glad I'm you're, sorry, you're enjoying it, Beastly. I, I I was surprised how quickly I bounced off of that game. I think it, part of it was because I am so interested in Destiny. Like you know, for a like PvP player, like I play a lot of hours of PvP in Destiny. Uh, so it's like g- switching between the two games was throwing my aim off in one game, and then throwing my game off my aim off in the next game. And that the movement, it's not so much the movement, but the the aiming in that game feels very different from Destiny, so it's very, very different mm-hmm. for me. Uh, but I found that unless I was playing with a group of people and communicating mm-hmm. with them, I found the game very frustrating because it's not kind to lone wolf players, which is frankly how I tend to play PvP. I, I 100% would agree with you there. Uh, the beauty of it with me is pretty much whenever I play a game, I got my roll dog with me side by side, my wife. Nice. Most of the time, yeah. she, she's like, she's like, come on, let's go. Uh, and we did find a few people doing voice chat, and that made a world of difference. And I do agree, the controls, you know, especially when it comes to that aiming, can be a little bit more difficult, especially for traditional first-person players, because you're only controlling your aim with that left and the right analog instead of using them both together. Uh, but it's really, really, um, it's a lot of fun. I'm having a great time with it. And who knows, man? Maybe one day when Destiny falls off the earth. We could get together and play a little bit of Overwatch together, the three of us. I'll play. I'll play Overwatch anytime, man. I have a, a blast with the game. You're on PlayStation Four. Yeah. Uh, Robbie, are you on PlayStation Four as well? Yeah, I have Overwatch, Overwatch on PS Four. I also bought it on PC, and I actually liked it a lot better on PC. I've heard, oh, yeah, wow. PC is just faster. It's smoother. I mean, yeah, on it's console, so much. I found it much awesome easier though. to aim on PC than I do on console. For some reason, I think it's the aim assist. I think that game has very little aim assist in. For me, being used to playing Destiny for two years, which has a ton of aim assist, like it just it really threw off my aim, especially when I was trying to snipe with uh, Widowmaker. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so I'm glad you're loving the game, man. It's a really fun game. I love the personality. I love the like the look and feel of the game. It's just it's beautiful. Now the thing is, guys, a couple of years ago, this would have been a game that we would all, we would all been really pissed off about, and that's something I kind of had to swallow my pride on. I remember when Xbox announced the online only type of experience. This is an online-only game. It doesn't have any single-player story. You can watch about 40 minutes worth of cutscenes, which are Disney Pixar quality, which I watched the entire thing and fell in love with the characters even, even more. Yeah, I watched that that's something they yesterday. did really well. I couldn't believe how good it was. I was like, wow, this could be a movie by itself. But it doesn't really have much of a story, but the gameplay loop is so rewarding, you know? Uh, and everybody seems to have that Achilles heel in another character. So if you see someone out really demolishing your team with a certain character... As long as you know what the pros and cons of each character are, you can really go out there and turn the tide of the battle. So to me, it's kind of like chess. It's a very, very fun game. I love you know learning all these new characters. Some characters I didn't think I would like, I ended up liking. Mm-hmm. There's probably a good seven or eight I still haven't tried. But um, you it's, know what it's happened a lot to me is that I'd get beat up by a character and be like, oh, I gotta check this character out. <laughs> like I'd, I'd have a match where like a Genji killed me like six times and be like. Oh fuck this! I got to learn me some Damn. Genji. <laughs> yeah. Genji, Genji, uh, 
the, the first time I played with him, you, it, this exact same thing happened to me. I was playing with Bastion, and I was mowing people down as a turret. And Genji came out of nowhere and reflected all my bullets back. I said, what the fuck, that? What just happened? He, you know, he uh, used the force and reflected everything back at me and destroyed me. And I was like, man, this is just an incredible game how there's somebody for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I'm, ha- I'm having a ton of fun with it. And it's been a long time since I've had another game, you know, b- bought a new game and just have been balls deep in it like that. I also bought Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 4. Okay, uh, so I played Destiny. <laughs> Tell us all about well, that. Let's hear about it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted you on purpose there because you said Resident Evil. <laughs> well, that was a, it was well, supposed to be a joke. Uh, well, Resident Evil Four is amazing. I just wanted to see what it looked like on PS4. I caught it on sale, mm-hmm. and I, did I they do Resident any graphical Evil. upgrade? Yeah, it looks like the PC version. Oh, okay. It looks really, really, really nice. And Resident Evil doesn't need much as far as any new enhancements. It's a classic game, and being able to play it. And better resolution and uh, frame rate than I've ever seen before is really a perk for me. Uh, and so as soon as me and my wife get done with uh, Overwatch, we've agreed to go through and play Resident Evil 5. Because honestly, I swear to you, no, no exaggeration, when we were together, when we first met, we beat that game no less than 40 times. Resident Evil 5? Co- 5, co-op. Yeah. And so it's one of our favorite games, kind of built our, our foundation on that. So we're looking forward to trying that out. And that's been my week, man. Yeah. Overwatch City. Five was a real disappointment for me. Like mm-hmm. after the brilliance of four, like I really expected to just get more of four, and five is definitely not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree, right? Uh, and the thing is, if I was playing it single player, mm-hmm. I would one hundred percent agree. Yeah, but but when you have somebody there with you the entire time, and you're laughing back and forth, and you're coordinating on a map, sometimes you can overlook that because of just that unadulterated fun you're having with I somebody. Can see that. Yeah. And we had a blast playing that game. But if I was sing- you know, playing it single player, which I've never done, never beat Resident Evil 5 single player, uh, we've always done it you know, co-op. And, and it's a lot of fun when you play the game that way. I'll, I'll just say that. And I haven't really had too much time to play those because Overwatch has been really killing me. Nice. And we'll see what happens, man. I don't know what to anticipate from this point on with Overwatch. It's like that go-to game. This morning, uh, my wife said, you want to play? I said, what do you want to play? Resident Evil 5? She said, no, Overwatch. I said, all right, well, shit. It's just that that gameplay loop, man, has gotten me so yeah. hooked. I want to try a new character like every every chance I can and yeah. pull off an amazing move. It's a great game. All right, so I do want to talk about uh, Destiny a little bit because Absolutely. I have been play, playing Destiny, and there's something really cool going on in Destiny right now. There is. Space and, Herpes. Yeah, Space Herpes, basically. basically. So, <laughs> so on, uh, uh, was it got space herpes Friday or Thursday? I think it was Friday. Thursday, I think. Yeah, it was Thursday. You're right. It was Thursday because I made a video about it on Friday morning. On Thursday, uh, an infection was released to the entire Guardian population. Uh, and basically, if you caught this infection, two things would happen. You get these little, like, glowing nanites, like, floating around your head, and you would get an XP buff, right? So, like, anything you did, you'd get extra XP for, which is cool, right? Uh, it, it's really cool how it was released, too, because it started with a streamer. Say No to Rage was streaming, uh, and this, you know, he all of a sudden, he, like, looks at his character, he notices he's got this buff, uh, and then this chat user owl sector came into his chat and said you know we're investigating this buff so that was actually bungie in his chat when the thing got noticed by by say no to rage bungie was in his chat as owl sector and got like this whole thing rolling people figured out that owl sector uh if you went to owl sector's twitch profile page uh it had a link to owlsector.bungie.net and once you get there, you find this big map, you find this like cylindrical kind of pie chart of how the infections are floating around. And there's actually five different infections, each with a different color. You can catch all of them or you can catch one of them. Um, but basically, like all these guardians are ro- running around with this infection now. And then as the weekend has progressed, we've gotten more and more kind of story unlocked on the Owl Sector website and how this... This is actually a really bad thing for Guardians. We've been quarantined from the the last city on Earth. Uh, There's all sorts of bad side effects that come along with this thing. They're trying to figure out how to fix it. And it's all tying in to the Rise of Iron, uh, the Rise of Iron DLC launch on Tuesday. So hopefully tomorrow we'll like come to some conclusion of what these infections are, who, who, you know, who started, who released it. Uh, I've already called Say No to Rage the typhoid, typhoid Mary of Destiny. (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a really cool thing that's going on right now. It's got a lot of people really amped up. I love these augmented reality games, ARGs. You know, Bungie's famous for doing these. They did it for Halo 2, Halo 3. I think they did some uh, even past Halo 3, but it's just something like, you know, it didn't take much, right? It, just a little like graphical flourish in the game and a little buff for every character. Uh, and then this website, this somewhat a simple website, but it's just got everybody in a flurry. You can see all the, like the big Destiny streamers have got like li little things on their uh, their profile pictures have all been kind of sevified. It's really just been a blast. Like it's a look, look, really smart thing to do. Yeah, I mean to me that's really incredible. They're able to change the game and get everybody that invested. You're going to you know find out what this. Uh, infection is and look at patient zero i guess and wonder what the hell he did wrong yeah but i did hear i heard you say that there are pros and cons to this illness this, well the this pro sickness. is the pro is you get this graphical flourish around your head like depending on how many of the, of the five infections you've get caught uh you can have one uh, or all five of these like colored floating things just rotating around your head um which just looks kind of cool. Like the guys who have all five of them, you can hardly see through it. You can hardly see their face. Oh yeah, at there's all. so much oh. stuff flying around. Oh, yeah. wow. It's really um, cool. And you get an XP buff. So everything you do, you get a little extra XP for. Uh, similar to how when we used to complete the nightfall, we got like the flames on our heads and we got an XP buff. It's very yep. similar to that. I think they probably just reused that code pretty much. No, what are the what are the cons of it though? I mean, well, we XP don't know, buff is right? So thing. if you get all five, there is a there's a kind of twitchiness to your vision if you're in the tower where your screen kind of goes wow. like every once in a while um, but the lore on the website actually describes how like uh patients have gone comatose and stuff like that that's amazing man yeah that it's just fun it's just really, really fun up. and it's like a great way like without releasing any new game before the dlc they've got it's like the whole really destiny community game. talking about it and just having a good time with it you know very What's smart. the latest really update? Awesome. Like, what do we know uh, so far now? Um, you know, I haven't read it today, but there's like, there's a lot that's come out since yesterday when I read it. So I, I, yeah. I wouldn't be able to be a, uh, would be able to be comprehensive. I'm definitely gonna check it, it out then. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, it's uh, owlsector.bungie.net. Yeah. All right. Well, do we have some news for this week? I'm guessing we do. Yes, start, we do, start, gentlemen. Starting off, keeping with Destiny, Destiny Rise of Iron will introduce paid experience boosts that players can pay real money for a quicker leveling process. How do you think of I know you don't like that, Briar. Uh, they already did it. This is not new news. They did this last time in April, and I it's had a fucking shit fit about yep. it. Uh, nobody listened to me. Everybody said, you know, you're overreacting. This isn't pay to win. Uh, pay now win. it's even more direct. Before, what it was is that you could buy... Uh, you could buy sterling packages that every once in a while would have a rep booster in them. Now yep. they've they've bypassed the sterling package and you could actually just purchase the rep booster. The rep booster gives you a better chance of getting better weapons. It gives you more chances of getting better weapons. So it's you know it's a very <sighs> and it's indirect, but it is there and it's just like it's another step down the pay to win path. And you know. I've actually, I actually had somebody in chat today before I was, before I started the show, I was streaming just some Destiny, and he was mad that the Planet Destiny podcast didn't talk about it. And I'm like, we yeah. already talked about it. We talked about it in fucking April. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was on, I was actually, you know, Say No to Rage's podcast, and I talked about it on his podcast when it was brand new. But it's like, you know, nothing, the community just told me to shut up, so, you know, you just you can sit up. in the okay. cake that you baked, you know? <laughs> yeah, now you guys can suck it because Briar was right. I, I, Man. I'm going to be in the same spot, you know? That is that is kind of disappointing. I'm, I mean, but for a person who hasn't played Destiny in a long time, how much is this package? It doesn't matter. I, it, don't buy it. You know, just, <laughs> just stay away from it. It's frustrating, yeah, that they're doing this. Yeah, just stay away from it. Don't buy it. If we encourage, if we, if we purchase this stuff, if we encourage this activity... Bungie and Activision are going to, you know, keep Continue. doing this. But if we don't, if we rebel against it, if we d look, there's nothing we can say on the internet that votes as strongly as our dollars. As our wallets. Yeah. If we do not pay for this, they will stop doing it. Look, e emotes, you know, pay for all the dances you want, pay for all the like the cosmetic stuff you want. Go crazy. But if we pay for stuff that is pay to win, then they're just going to keep doing it because they want that money. 
Yeah, mm. completely agree with you, Briar. Just if you don't support something, don't buy it. Period. Like just yes. send That's, a message. Hopefully it works out, right? Because this is this has been kind of the trope of people on YouTube and, and commentators for a long time when we see these type of packages introduced to a game is a vote with our wallets. But how often does it actually happen? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I would I would love for it, I would love for for people you know to to resist it. But if people see other people doing it and they're getting advantages and, and, and right. they're going to be like, man, you got that shit by, you know, basically paying for it. Well, if you're going to do it and I got to go through all this work for less, I'm going to pay because I got to keep up with you. you right. know, I got to right. make sure. I have. So it's one of those really tough situations because paying, you know, res- resisting it and, and choosing to vote with your wallet. And you see a whole group of people who pay for this and they've got it's better tempting. shit than you. You're like, man, that's really that pisses me off. I got to get this now. Because I see amazing stuff that they may have accrued by this, you know, new method. Yeah. And so it's, basically it's more- it goes deeper than that because the drop rates for weapons right now in the game are very fucking low. So it's very enticing to use these rep boosters and, you know, play a bunch of Crucible and hope to get, you know, weapons that you want from from Lord Shax or from the Vanguard vendors. Two of the best weapons in the game, two of the best snipers in the game are only available through through the method of you know ranking up this? your level well no through ranking up your level with lord shacks with the crucible vendor or with the vanguard vendor and you can do that faster if you have these rep boosters that's that's wrong man i know it's wrong that's... i know it's been wrong since april though and everybody just mm. ignored it yeah. and now it's back yeah I mean, is, this, is this is something like this, you know, within the realm of everybody being able to buy it? How expensive is this? We don't. Uh, I don't know. Boosts. I don't know yet. Yeah. Wow. I mean, well, yeah. If you can, don't support this. Like straight up, I'm gonna be real. This is bullshit. Like, don't yeah. support this stuff if you can. It's bullshit. It really is. It's 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 a two sided <laughs> argument, right? There's people like Briar and and other people who are hardcore Destiny fans. I mean, tons of people still play only Destiny. And then yeah. there's a, the, another group of people who maybe quit playing it six months ago or a year ago who now want to get back in and become as powerful as the people who've been grinding all this time. Yeah. So there's going to be one audience that says, fuck that. I'm going to pay for this so I can catch up and maybe be as good or as strong as someone like Briar. And then you yeah. got people who, you know, went through leveling up and grinding like Briar says, Oh, you're going to cheat to get here. It's going to break the game. It's going to break that, that whole experience. Uh, to I me. mean, I hope not. The thing is, BC is that every time you, you do level up, you're, you're not guaranteed a weapon. You're not guaranteed. Well, you are now, actually. That's not true. You're not guaranteed a good one, though. I don't know. It's yeah. it's bullshit, if you ask me. It's just it gives you more shots at weapons, and I, I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't let's like uh, it. keep our keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully they don't destroy Destiny, because that's the thing that kind of made Destiny so appealing, is that you basically got what you were worth before. Yeah. You know, you put in you put in work. Of course, it was a roll of the dice, but you really had to work to get shit in that game and and if they make it you know this easy for everybody to get really powerful stuff it's going to just take away that whole the it's whole experience. addiction yeah the grind that Finger people enjoy crossed yeah okay so moving on the last guardian the last guardian has been delayed to december 2016 just over a month from its original october 26 release date a whole month i hope it's the last delay we can only hope but uh Man, well, I just want to see this game. The last Guardian's already. last delay. I'm not even concerned. Um, I'm hearing really, really, really uh, depressing impressions on this game now. A lot of people who've actually had hands on with it uh, are saying it, it's like a PlayStation 2 game. It still has that Orwellian control it looks scheme. Looks like a PlayStation 2 game. Yeah. And, and they're saying <laughs> it feels like one, too. It still has that awkward control scheme of games yeah. like Shadow of the Colossus. Good thing about PlayStation, you're able to actually change the buttons now, but. It's not looking good. A game that's been in development for a damn decade is getting these kind of early impressions. Unless it completely turns around, I'm not. I hate to say it, I'm not really super excited about this now. And I don't think a month is going to make a difference. <sighs> you know, it's been a decade. Yeah, I haven't seen. There's nothing about that game that's really impressed me so far. Like, there's graphically, it doesn't look that great compared to other stuff that we're seeing right now. Uh, you know, it's been delayed, delayed, delayed. That doesn't bode well for the game. Like, you look at other games that get delayed for 10 fucking years, it's not a good sign. Like, Duke Nukem uh, Forever? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, the, this is the thing, right? A lot of people have lost their desire to play this game. Nobody's really amped for it. I don't know anybody personally who's talking about it. Team Eco fans 
uh, haven't even really been speaking too much about it. They should have learned from Activision, and they should have included a PS4 version of Shadow of the Colossus with a pre-order, and they would have been good. <laughs> that they should have done nice. that. Yeah, I mean, this game has been tortured development, right? Like, it's just, it sucks. It's really sad because it's made by a really great team of people who made some amazing games, like Shadow of the Colossus, Eco, wonderful games. And people were excited for this 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago now. And it's just past the time when it would have made that impact and it would have just been a better game. And I'm worried about it, too. I really am. But I hope it's good. I'm trying to remember, but from what I recall, didn't Mark Cerny go in there to help them finish this game? Yeah. He might have, yeah. I think so. Mm, well, that's depressing. New details on Death Stranding have revealed that the game will be open world and will have some sort of co-op according to Hideo Kojima. Metal Gear Solid I, 6? I don't care because this game is still so far off. They announced it way too early, and I don't understand why. Like, just be quiet and tell me things about it when the game is getting closer to its release date. This is the kind of thing that close. you read a story now... And then you hold that idea in your head, and, and then, then it changes you get pissed completely. off that it's not exactly what you thought they, you know, exactly what they said about it four years ago, right? Yeah. Like they don't know what this game's gonna be. They're just starting the development now. They just <laughs> chose an engine. Yeah. Like, like this story, if you read it, they, they don't know just what this chose game's the engine gonna end for the up game. Even you know, no. like they well, might they have I, ideas, but that thing's gonna develop over time. I I've kind of got come to the realization that Microsoft and Sony are like a politician. They'll say anything to get elected. We've seen this with E3. We've seen this with all kinds of games conferences where games are revealed four, five, six years in advance just so they can win that conference, just so they can get people excited at that time and and win the goodwill of the consumer for that moment. Some of these games might not ever come out, but that's what that's what we've really come to. You know, we're at that time in gaming where a game might literally be five or six years out, but they'll get you excited about it right now. It's like walking into your son's room when he's 10 years old and show him a picture of a car that he's going to get when he turns 18. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, really, that's... thankful it's not as dysfunctional as the uh, actual political things going on in America right now. Let's not start that. Let's not get into it. Yeah, I know. I wasn't planning on it. Don't worry. <laughs> right, right. No, you don't like talking about politics, so it's all good. All right, so... I will murder a on. fucker. <laughs> <laughs> We've expressed before, too, that America is basically... Screwed. So hey, I'm man, you, yeah. you don't talk about my country big, that way, you Canadian motherfucker. Your own, <laughs> your Sorry, I don't even live in America. And I'm stating opinions on it. You entitled asshole. Your backyard's a mountain. Okay, I don't want to hear that shit. All right, Robbie's backyard that. literally is a it's mountain, guys. Big, yeah, it's fucking beautiful. Right across. It so. is beautiful. I would, I would pitch a tent and live in your backyard. It's right, so you know, awesome. you could build another fucking house back there. You could. I mean, I thought I was looking. I thought he photoshopped himself in front of a a landscape from National Geographic. He's like, no, that's where I, that's where I do my hunting at. I roast marshmallows (laughs) over here. All right. So, Assassin's Creed: The Ezio Collection has been announced for PS4 and Xbox One with a release date of November fifteenth. It will package Assassin's Creed Two, Brotherhood, and Revelations all in one package with enhanced visuals. Anybody excited about this? Don't give a shit. No. No? Easy, it's oh. kind of odd, but I, liked, ex- I liked Assassin's Creed 2. I thought it was good. I didn't I didn't uh, keep following Assassin's the yearly Creed release though. Stayed over its welcome though. I liked it. I, I thought it was a fun game, but I'm ready for the new new. You know, I'm I don't, I'm done with these re-releases here stuff for COD 4. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's the> exception. <laughs> Everybody's excited about that. Now, let me ask you guys a hypothetical. If you had to have one, uh, which one? Which re-release would you be most excited about? The Assassin's Creed re-release, Batman, or uh, Bioshock? Oh, Bioshock, definitely. Burr? Easily, love those games. <sighs> to me, it's between Bioshock and Batman because those two first two I, Batman's. I, I are don't want to so play good. any of them, man. They're all. First of all, they're all too new. Like Bioshock, I feel like I just played that game. Bioshock Infinite, I literally did just play. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I it's don't know, man. This whole re release thing. Three and a half years. The only thing, the only reason, the only reason I find COD 4 to be the exception here is because it's a multiplayer game and you can't go back and play it, right? And it's, it's broken. Old, it, and it's it gonna has be been like hacked a new game. to death, right? It is just yeah. hacked to death. I don't care about the upgraded visuals in COD 4. If COD 4 still operated, 
the multiplayer still operated on the Xbox 360, I'd still play it because it's a fun ass game. So this to me is like a really exciting thing is that, yeah, COD 4, I'm going to be able to play the multiplayer again. I haven't played it in a long time. There's going to be a, a bunch of people coming into COD 4 who didn't play it before because that game's 10 years old, you know, who well, didn't play it before. And they're going to, you know, they're going to get to experience the first time. And I'm going to get to absolutely kick their shit in. Because I know the <laughs> yeah. maps in COD 4 are like the back of my goddamn hand. <laughs> well, I see, right, this, yeah. this is the thing, right? Um, I didn't really get to play COD 4 too much years ago, but the game is, what, over 10 years old now, yeah. right? It's nine years old. Now, now, the thing is this. There are remakes, and then there are unnecessary remakes. This is one I consider necessary, because everything that we're going to see now will be an improvement. We see remasters. Remastered games that really don't look that much better than the originals now. But this one right here is night and day compared to the original. Plus, it's Which one are you talking about? COD 4? COD 4. I could care less about the graphical include. I know, but that's you. That's you. I there don't care. I'm, still excited I'm just happy that you can play it again. That's the that's the problem, is that they did not support that game. The the hackers just picked it apart. The same goes for you know a lot of those early Call of Duties. Modern Warfare World of War Modern Warfare is... 2? unbelievably bad yeah modern warfare 2 you just can't go back and play them anymore and those were seminal moments in online shooters and like huge huge games so i'm really excited that that's coming back i'm glad it's cheap i'm glad they're not trying to spend six you know sell it for 60 bucks could you imagine i hope that they do re-release it for 20 dollars as a standalone product Uh, i think it's kind of scary to you yeah but i mean that's why i'm happy about that Bioshock, I can play that on a PC. It looks great. I can play Bioshock 2 on a PC. It looks great. I can play Infinite or Bioshock Infinite on the Xbox 360, and it looks great. Yeah. You know, like, that's not <laughs> a big deal. But my thing is, you know, if a game is this old, a remaster is warranted. Like you said, Bioshock, you know, Bioshock Infinite just came out. We just played that just a few years ago. This game hasn't been touched for almost 10 years. So, you know, seeing this come out now, seeing it look better, and actually having those 16 multiplayer maps that actually work seamlessly now, I think it's a warranted remaster. I'm, I'm really excited about getting into it, for me, really for the first time. So that's my thoughts on remasters. Some of them are bastards, and some of them are, you know, really worth our time. There have been some really good remasters, though. I don't want to put all of them in the same category. I think the Master Chief Collection, aside from the multiplayer being broken... In theory, that was fantastic. There were a couple other ones, too, that were good. But, of course, there have been a lot of shitty ones. So, you know, I think it's just an exception. Like, older games being remastered and being brought back, I love that. If it's too new, definitely. I don't like that, then. All right. Well, continuing on, I didn't tell you guys, you know, at the beginning of the show, but I, I was recently pulled over for driving, and the story is this. A man driving a DeLorean in Sussex, England, was pulled over for speeding at 88 miles per hour. The man denies yeah. he was trying to travel through time. I wasn't trying to travel through time. I knew this story would be fun. I just threw it in. First ticket in years. That's fucking cool, man. Everyone in chat, get... please tell me you know what this is referencing because I love those movies. Oh, oh well, my God, man. This guy shouldn't have got a ticket. I would have, you know, if I was the officer and I saw that, to me, that would have been a, a wild, cool moment. I would have said, hey, man. I see what you're doing. It's really, really like, cool. I wasn't trying to travel through time. I swear. The <laughs> flux capacitor down. wasn't turned on. I wasn't ready. So, yeah. <laughs> Was the good. guy's name Marty? <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Was Doc Brown in the car, too? I mean, yeah. That's really cool. That's that's a dream car, man. I, I really love to play something like that. What we got next, Robbie? We, we're kind of short on news this, this week. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, definitely have exciting stuff with Destiny coming up. But our next piece of news has to do with uh, No Man's Sky. Ooh, uh, really? so, Time for some refunds. Go ahead, Ravi. Kind of, yeah. So anyways, uh, No Man's Sky did not have a great PR strategy. According to PlayStation Shuhei Yoshida, that led people feeling disappointed by the final game. So basically, he addresses fully that, like, he thinks, yeah, people overhyped it. Like, you know, maybe the developers were promising too much. And he's completely right about that. Well, didn't so. wasn't Sony over the, the PR? Didn't Sony promote this game? Yeah, and they I mean, definitely promoted it too heavily. I, I think like the, that the main game. point, though, that people have a real problem with it was the developer himself was out there, like talking about multiplayer talk features, shows. yeah, and yeah. talk shows, and like he just—it seems like he was just talking out of his ass, you know. He just like these features just it does in the now. game, yeah. It, you know, you say it does now, Robbie. 
Oh, I'm saying now looking back on those times when he was on like Stephen Colbert and stuff like that and yeah, talk shows like he was promising so much and it just it got everyone excited because it's like this game sounds incredible and then yeah. a lot of this stuff was either changed or wasn't in the game at all. Like the space battles. The space battles were not bad, but like they weren't anything like they showed in the pre release trailers. Well, for me, probably the biggest thing that seems like they lied about I don't have the game, so I can't say for sure, but my my perception is this. There's really no multiplayer at all in this game, correct? No. To me, that's no. that's really fucked up. That's the thing we talked about. You know, yeah. everybody was speculating it would be kind of like Journey that you might, you know, be traveling through space and just see a random person, and you can just, you know, hang out for a minute, maybe not even be able to speak, but they were going about their mission and you going about yours. But the fact that you have endless space, limitless possibilities, and feel so limited, is kind of a smack in the face to all the people who bought this game. I'm happy I didn't buy it, and I mean. Even when I saw the, the early stuff, I didn't see really that gameplay uh, that really would have got me excited. I was never excited about this game, and I, I never even bought it. Who knows no, if it's 10 bucks? I man, actually I am would. glad that I bought it because what they did accomplish was pretty amazing. For 15 uh, people, it is amazing what they did. Like, yes, uh, yes, say. they promised stuff that wasn't in the game. Um, and yes, like, the game was not as deep as I had hoped it was. Um, and actually, I didn't really... Going into it, like I kept saying, like, is this game gonna be like, is there gameplay to this game, or is it just gonna be like you go and explore? And it turned out, yeah, you just go and explore, and there's not a whole lot that you do explore. But yep. having bought it and having played it for the, I don't know for how long, but I'm gonna be looking at other games, Mass Effect, Destiny, other games that are like space travel games, and being saying like, like, No Man's Sky laid down the gauntlet of what you can do as far as building a a, you know, even just a galaxy, right? Whereas, you know, you you walk around on the planet, you get in your ship, you fly out into space, you can go to another planet, you can go to, you know, like that is now what I'm going to expect in the years to come from other games that take yeah. place in space. If 15 because people can nail space travel, imagine loading what a screens, 500 man like team can 10 do. minute loading screens in the fucking elevator, that shit's done. Done. I'm not. I'm not dealing with that anymore. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you leave Mass Effect alone. You know, man. watching my <laughs> ship like fly through space for five minutes while like the Cosmodrome loads in. Fuck that shit. I'm done with that. Like this tech, somebody needs to buy this tech because clearly the developers here couldn't make a game out of it. But the tech is absolutely fucking amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. And now, like, let's move on. This is all. It's very similar to how I felt about Shadow of Mordor. Is like they had some ideas in Shadow of Mordor that were so fucking incredible that I just wanted wholesale people to just rip them off for other video games because they were so good and that's what i want from no man's sky like having played no man's sky i feel like i've experienced something that no other games ever offered and i want i want that to be like this, the base standard for games you know like if you make a star wars game i want this shit to be in it if you make a mass oh, yeah. effect if you make destiny it's not gonna be in destiny 2 obviously but destiny 3 you know in five years I want to see other see companies this having taken this, taken advantage of technology like this because it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, well, please have dynamic for, space travel with no load screens. For, it for is me, they nailed that. For me, like my mind, you guys know I'm a little crazy anyway, but my mind it goes way out there when I think of stuff like this. Briar, you made a good point. You said what you see here was so amazing that forever and the rest of your life, the the expectation of space. It's a little bit different when you play video games. You feel that in the future, other developers need to utilize this tech and make a game around it. And when I was in middle school, there was a guy who came to my school. And uh, it was a little short guy, a little white guy. And he came to the gym and everybody was like kind of in the auditorium. He was talking to us about focus. And he had a basketball in his hand. And he, he explained what he was doing, what he was getting ready to do. He was getting ready to shoot 100 free throws. Mm -hmm. He shot 100 okay. And he made 100. And everybody, the girls in school, were getting ready to meet him in the locker room. Anyway, that was really amazing to everybody. You know, the, the thing, he was able to master one aspect of basketball. But he wouldn't make it in the NBA because he lacked so much. For me, that's the way I feel about a game like No Man's Sky. They master something incredible, which is this limitless space, this immersion. Uh, they, they kind of done away with loading screens and all that stuff is really really amazing but the aspects of games that we've grown to love over the last few years that keep us engaged in what we're actually doing we're solely lacking mm -hmm. and all you got was this incredible 
uh, expansive universe for you to basically explore. Right. And that's that's my thoughts on No Man's Sky. No, I Master totally agree Un- with you, BC. Well said. I absolutely yeah. agree with you. Is that they, they, they did not make a game here. They made a universe, mm-hmm. but they didn't put a game in, the, in it. And that's what yeah. No Man's Sky is lacking. Um, but if a you know if a company that makes games can take this technology or technology like this and adapt it so that you know you, you know if how cool would a Star Wars game be if you could fly you know you if you could play you know Star Wars you you run out of the bar or the you know the Mos Eisley Cantina you run mm-hmm. through the stormtroopers you know, you fight your way to the to the Millennium Falcon, you get in the Millennium Falcon, you take off, you go up into space, you see the Star Destroyer there, and you gotta like, what the fuck are we gonna do? And you fly the Star Destroyer around the Star Destroyer, you got TIE Fighters, like all of this happens in one seamless transition without loading screens and, you know, all of that shit, man. It's so much more immersive. That's real. That's the lesson I think we're, that's what I hope we pull out of No Man's Sky. And that's why I don't regret buying it. That's why I don't regret it, the fact that it was developed. Like, I'm just hoping that it's not going to happen in a year. It's not going to happen in two years. But in five years, like, I hope that, you know, games have progressed to the point where this is just standard. Right? That would wow. be really, that would be really, really incredible. Right? The thing is, I'm looking probably, I'm thinking more like 10 years. And the reason I say that is because a game that is that expansive, that is really centered around the story and the progression of your character it's going to demand a lot of story and a lot of different things to do in all these places. And it's going to take a shit ton of of writing. You know, that's something that mass effect is great at. They've got so much story in their kind of linear experience. Yeah. If you open that up and you can go to different places, you're going to expect story. You're going to expect activities. You're going to expect things to do on different planets, places to go. And that's going to be at least 10, 20 times the right. Yeah, well, they don't have to, to do now. like the entire universe like No Man's Sky is doing. If they just did mm-hmm. all this in a galaxy that had, you know, eight planets and each one of these planets had, you know, four cities that were marked on the map. And that's where you went to it. You could you could fly anywhere you wanted on the planet. But, you know, more than likely there'd be shit all there. But when you flew to the cities, then you then you were in that Mass Effect you know, story experience, right? And you went and searched out the people you needed to search out. Then you get in your ship, you fly back out, you go to the space station, whatever. What was that space station called in Mass Effect? The, the sp- I'm Fire trying to remember. Well, I know the ship's Normandy, but I don't remember the name. Yeah, of the I don't space remember the space. name of the space station, but you know what I mean. It's like, mm-hmm. I mean, it just be, it's so much more immersive than, you know, what we've seen in the past. And yeah, No Man's Sky, I would say it's, you know, it's a failure as a product on its own. But the technology, man, it just shows so, it shines so bright. And it's so, like, I just, I can't wait till the guys who can make a great story and a great video game get their hands on that tech. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I think the No Man's Sky team could make awesome tech. They needed these guys over here to make the great story to make an awesome and a great game. video game. Yeah. Like yeah. that guy in middle school, if he, had- you know, went to a camp with maybe the the eighty seven Bulls. You know, he would have came out and maybe been able to join the NBA. And every time he hit the foul line, it would have been all nothing but net. You know, we'll see what happens. You know, I I, I hope the the developer you know takes this technology and does something even better with it. Lesson learned here, though. Two lessons: Shuya Yoshida shouldn't have came out and kind of threw them under the bus, in my opinion, because basically, Shuhei knew what this game was. Sony knew what this game was before it came out. And if they were really that concerned, they could have had someone, you know, quality tested to see exactly what people would have thought. And of course, for the developer, you don't go out there touting what your shit is, knowing you're lying. There's, to me, there's almost nothing worse than the person well, he who might not know. He might not have known. He may have been shooting for something, right? And then coming up short in the end. It goes well, back to the Kojima thing, where you know, like, why are you even talking about what features are going to be in a game that's fucking you're right, six three years, years away, four four years away. Six Open years. I hope world. it's not that long. I don't wow. know, man. The guys' games take forever. <laughs> they do. You're no. You're totally right. Yeah, he, Kojima's what an average of about four years for a development cycle. Is so it? yeah, yeah. So I mean, we'll see it 2020. You know, hopefully. And he announces a game nine months after he releases the Phantom Pain. That's why I'm like, why is this being announced so early? Like this game is nowhere near done. They practically just started. Well, That's I mean, you can't really fault him. Everybody does that. You know, every developer does that. Look at Final Fantasy. 
Fantasy 7. Look at Final Fantasy 15. Kingdom Hearts you know? 3. There's tons. When's that coming out? Yeah. Jesus. We're talking about Square, though. Square is really the king of that shit. But oh, a lot Jesus. of developers, yeah. they'll announce a game before the game has really even begun just to get people excited and let them know, hey, look, we're working on something. It's happening. You know, That's get cool. excited about it. That's okay. But to start talking about features, that's... Mm, yeah, because a lot can change, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, uh, uh, I, the developers of Borderlands came out this summer and said, Borderlands 3, we're looking at it. You know, like, that's getting going. Yep. They're not saying, look, it's going to have, you know, <laughs> this, this, and that. They're just starting. You know, they're just starting. That's what I love, out. man. I know, like, we all know that they've, been, they've said, like, very clearly, we're working on the next Borderlands. Like, they are not saying a thing about it. Perfect. Yeah. Let us know what's happening. Go silent until you're. It's somewhat close. Well, yeah. a good a good example of what you guys are talking about is our last story. This is how you do it. But after you do something like this, you need to just shut up, work on it until you're able to talk about it a little bit more. Metro series developer Four A Games has begun testing their next project with a new image. Teasing, not testing. Teasing. I'm sorry. Teasing their next project with a new image. It appears to be heading towards some sort of sci-fi shooter. That's all you need to know. Oh, so they're not going to do another Metro? They're doing it, no, another I guess universe? Not. Well, Metro yeah, I... is kind of a sci-fi shooter, though. How is that sci-fi? That's post-apocalyptic. Oh, I guess you're right with the dark ones. Yeah, you are Don't right, actually. Don't you think that post-apocalyptic is sci science fiction? No, man, it's drama. For a moment, I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> you're right, actually. That does have a lot of sci-fi. I mean, yeah, yeah definitely take a look at the image. It's it looks, science look... fiction. Fiction. <laughs> We love I you guess you're right, people. actually, because this stuff doesn't exist in it, really. But okay, whatever. You know what I mean. Sci-fi is more of like a space thing, I think of though. I guess that's why. But Robbie, I mean, just yeah. take, look, just take in a deep breath of that mountain air right now. <sighs> Canada mountains. Smells like, like that's like Canada air. spring yep. in here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, basically, the image is just like a hand and a weapon. Like it literally. It looks like it's straight out of Destiny. I mean, whatever it is, Foreign Games is a really awesome developer. I love the Metro games. Yeah, so the Metro games is, are I'm great, sure it'll man. be good. Yeah. Metro games are intense. Those and I mean, they've said little things like they, back in 2014, I remember they said like our next project will probably be less linear. We plan to do a little more open world. So like, I mean, these guys are an awesome team. Like, a whatever they're doing. That's a little concerning. Those Metro games, they were so cool because like they were such a they cool a story linear. experience. and Yeah. But hey, hey, let's see what they do, man. I I got trust. I got trust. They've never disappointed me so far. I've only played two of their they games, made but two really good games. Yeah, yeah. they're. I mean, what? they're a pretty new studio. They've only made two games, but so far so I mean, good. And, and the games they've made have, have really been stellar and pushed at least seven generation consoles to the fucking next level, man. Another uh, thing a, too, just to put in quick, uh, because they haven't released a game in over three years since Last Light. Like this game has been in development for a while now, and they're just talking about it. That's the way to do it. Yeah, well, it means they've got something cooking and probably ready to come out of the oven sometime soon. I wouldn't be shocked mm -hmm. if it was announced. No, man. Yeah, it's and, been and in development thanks for a lot. Wow. Me too, man. <laughs> Shit. The, the thing, though, uh, kind of going back to what we talked about with Hideo Kojima, I think that he kind of w needed to go out there and say, hey, look, I'm back. I'm working on something because he's been in the news for a year. This has been a very tough situation that he's been going through with Konami. He's handled it with the respect and grace. And I think that he wanted his supporters to know more so than anything, I'm back this fast working on something for you. Uh, because he normally doesn't come out years in advance and say, this is the new game. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, look at Metal right. Gear Solid. Yeah, I mean, I think he just needed to let people know it's not over for me. He was saying it while he was still with Konami. I just want to get back to work. And, and that's my opinion on him. But 4A games, man, do your thing. We, we've seen developers get really good at something and then try something else and fail. But there are also stories like Guerrilla Games, who I believe is making probably one of the best games to come out anytime soon with Horizon Zero Dawn, trying something completely new than what they did with Killzone. Yeah, I and mean, all signs point to that being like an awesome yeah, game. Yeah, that looks it like... It really does. I'm very excited and very hopeful that Horizon's going to be awesome. Like, that is the game that I am the most great. excited for, easily. I, gu I guarantee you, Briar, That's that 2017, game will be right? in minute. February, yeah. I'm sorry. That game is said... gonna I think it'll pull you away from Destiny for a week oh, or two. Oh yeah, I'm. I mean, that the only thing crazy. that's got me wary about it is that it's made by Girly Games. <laughs> you know, like, seriously that. though, it's like those <laughs> guys. 
they have a history of putting out these like trailers, gameplay trailers and shit that look way better than the fucking game does when it comes out. Killzone Two, I know yeah. what you're talking about. I think Killzone yeah. Four was the same right way on the one. PS4, wasn't it? I'm pretty oh. sure they had trailers come out that were like, "Wow, look at how oh. great this game looks," and then most of the game doesn't. No, really look actually, like I would say no, the no, Shadowfall no, no, no. release footage looked no. about the same. I'd say Killzone Shadow Two long. definitely was way better. Right, I'll have to take a look you at that. Guys, you guys, let us know what you think in the comments below because my memory serves. Uh, what happened with uh, with Killzone Two was a tragedy. They created CG and pretended like it was actual in-game footage. No, it was they, they didn't do that with with Killzone 4. I know. What they did was they just showed like the most graphically intense parts and then the rest of the game didn't quite look like that. To me, that, that entire game looked amazing. I, yeah. I would have much preferred to see uh, more outdoor scenes because to me, those outdoor levels really shown what, you know, hardcore development and really making a game as beautiful as it can be can, can achieve. But to me, Killzone Shadowfall is still one of the best looking games on PS4. It, to me, it's a technical marvel. The game is not that great. Story is lackluster. Uh, the main protagonist is kind of lackluster. It feels but like the you're way running, game, playing Halo in the mud. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> like, a, you got some. Uh, some ankle weights on or some shit. I don't agree with that, man. I think Killzone 2 and 3 were kind of slow. I thought they sped it up with Shadowfall, though. I actually really love Shadowfall's campaign, it's, just from a gameplay standpoint. I Not didn't play the really, campaign. But... I jumped into the multiplayer. because I, I didn't do that. It was fun, too. I liked that, too. It was I, slow. It, felt, it literally felt like... I started playing it, I'm like, this just feels like I'm stuck in the mud all the time. It, it was definitely faster than the previous Killzone. It's still... You know, you can't really turn Killzone into Call of Duty, so it would have been really tough for people who are hardcore into Killzone for them to get into that game... Kill, Shadowfall and be running around and boosting off and doing things that you're doing in Call of Duty. So you had to keep it kind of similar. But I think that Shadowfall and Mercenaries on the Vita were, were even faster than Killzone 1 and 2 on yep. PS2. So, I mean, let's see what they do. You know, going back to Metro, hopefully they're able to kind of do what has been done here with um, Horizon. Horizon is going to be the shit. Yeah. I mean, that's a game I'm super, super excited about. Oh, I want to let you guys know. Tally up in the comments below what you think I'm going to get. On Wednesday of this week, i got a vacation day. I've scheduled it. I'm going to go spend some money. I'm going to the doctor. We're going to find out if I'm having a girl or a boy. And so hey, to me, I'm, can we name it? It all depends, Brian. Didn't we already, name it? It? If, Didn't if, we already if, decide on that? Yeah, I think we did. That's right. Yeah. God damn it. Mm, anyway. I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm going to be a girl. I, I got so. two boys and two girls. My boys are 15 and 14. Okay. My girls, you're, you're are, my girls 50, are six. 50, huh? Right now, 50 50. You know? So I'm really, really, really excited about this. Um, I personally think it's going to be a girl, but everybody, of course, is against me. They think it's going to be a boy because they're doing a numbers game. Um, but I want to know what you guys think in the comments. And, bro, you got to catch me, man. You only need, what, three more? Three more kids? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I need f what three five. I don't think kids? I'm gonna do that, Beasley. It's gonna take me a while <laughs> to catch up. At some someday, I'd like to retire. <laughs> <laughs> None of my it, entire it, investment in it is uh, retirement be a little bit savings hard. and all these kids. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Oh, yeah, if well, you're lucky, they'll be stupid and won't want to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the way to look at it. <laughs> Hopefully they're not stupid. Shit. Hey, I didn't choose college, so am I stupid? <laughs> all right. Uh, we got any other news today? That's all the news for this week. Uh, not that so that much. Robbie was able. Destiny, yeah. Well, I mean, and Briar, you got to take the good with the bad. We got a chance to talk about Destiny today. We used Dude, to talk I about Destiny so on every hype, man. DC Thought show. You guys have no idea how hyped I am. Like, I'm having trouble sleeping because I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I was playing Destiny all night last night. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm Rise of Iron comes out Tuesday. The new raid comes out Friday. On Friday, I'll be live streaming uh, our first playthrough of the raid. We're going to go for a world's there. first raid completion. I'm um, doing that with a... I don't know if you know this, Beastly. I'm going to be doing that with Destin Legary from IGN. Destin Legary? Legary, yeah, thank you. Uh, plus the Planet Destiny podcast crew. Oh, you're the fucking man. Right? So yeah. that's like, I'm really excited for that. I really, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. If we got into the top 10 raid completions, like first raid completions, I'd be like ecstatic. Yeah. Oh, but man, what I'm so really, sick. what I'm really hoping for is to have an experience like we had 
from last year when we did the Taken King. We did the same thing for the Taken King raid. Uh, and it was just a blast, like trying to figure this stuff out real time with the chat, you know, live streaming it. It's just absolutely a blast. This time I get to do it on my own channel, which I'm really excited about. Like, I mean, it is this week, man, is going to be like, I, f I feel like it's like going to be a highlight of my life type of week, you know, like that's how wow. excited I am right now. I'm so, so happy Briar, for you. I am so excited too. I will be there supporting you. I I'm, can't wait now, to see you guys kick ass in that raid. I am so now, excited. Now, now, everything that you said, one thing pops in my mind, bro. You said that you're having trouble sleeping. So tell Miss Rabbit to just get a fly swatter. Mm -hmm. And every time you roll over and say, Gellahorn, she can just slap you back to sleep. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see how slapping no me more. with a fly swatter is going to make me go back to sleep. <laughs> just tell her it works. <laughs> just, oh, I'll give you a Red Bull. That'll help you get back to sleep. Beasley just confirmed why I'll never give him my wife's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Ideas like this that I cannot support. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. That's really incredible, Briar. Uh, man, that's exciting. Uh, I've known Dustin. He's been into Destiny since it first came out. Yeah. You know, he could, he could hardly do his job at IGN for the first year. You know, they would even say that live that he can't work because all he's doing is playing Destiny. <laughs> so you guys are going to have a fucking blast. Yeah. It's going to be incredible. I got to play with him last week. We did like a a raid prep like a first run with like the group and everybody kind of get to know each other a little bit and he was a really nice guy he's like it's super cool cool dude he's really good at destiny uh, of course the planet destiny crew we got patrick we got tefty teft you know i'm i can't wait man i can't wait this, this is gonna be a big thing man yeah well brian if, if this thing proves very uh if it proves very big in your your youtube career your twitch career just build an extra room on your house and I'll just bring my family down there, and then I mean, just, my wife's gonna fill the fucker up with cats. Like this is going crazy up in here. We got we have four cats now. Cats? <laughs> You're having kids. Cat. I'm having cats. <laughs> You're more cats than children. <laughs> hey man, how many? Now you've gotten how many cats over the last few what month? Two months? Uh, what how, happened was how, you want to hear the story? It's a really quick story. Yes, yes. All right, um, so I'm streaming. I'm live streaming, right? Playing some Destiny. My wife comes in the office, and she's like, Hey, um, one of my friends has these kittens. Is it okay if we foster them for three days? Oh. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. She's like, great. They're on their way over now. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like my what? input wasn't really required here. <laughs> so it turns out the plan was that the kittens were going to get, were going to stay here. They... Kittens that small, these things, I mean, their eyes were shut. They hardly, you know, they'd just been born uh, and then oh. been abandoned. Uh, I mean, these things had to be bottle fed like once an hour, once every three hours or something like that. Wow. So it was like, I mean, it, and my wife is, a, you know, a veterinary scientist, so she knows how to do this stuff. Well, it turns out the, the vet who is supposed to take these things off of our hands and get them adopted totally flaked out. What? So this was eight weeks ago. And we've still got these kittens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you guys are going to be the crazy cat family. I can just see it now. <laughs> well, Briar, let me just say this. My wife's pregnant, and she's into that, you know, that mothering, nurturing mode. Maybe yeah. Be a cat. yeah. I bet she wants a cat. <laughs> or three. <laughs> Listen, li this, this is a short, short story, but you, we're, you know you and I have a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. This is about two and a half weeks ago. I was taking the trash out. I walked outside. There was this little tiny kitten, about eight weeks old, yep. sitting at the top of the stairs, eating something. And normally, you know, a stray cat, you walk, you get close to them, they'll take off running. Mm -hmm. I'm walking past this cat with a big ass bag of trash, and it wasn't, it didn't even stop. It was eating something, you know, going off, trying to eat something. And so by the time I made it to the trash can, my pregnant wife is standing next to the cat somehow. She said, "Oh, it's eating a moth." I said, it's "Eating a moth?" She said, "Yeah, it's oh. an insect." And so she said, "I'm gonna go get it a piece of turkey or something." No! No! <laughs> Don't do that! That's the worst thing you, you can do. You won't leave you alone after yeah, that. Yeah, that thing's never going away now. <laughs> it's, Briar, since that day the fucking cat's been here. Mm-hmm. You might as well just wonder. welcome it in, man. Her, her, her name is Harley Quinn, and Kate said, it's over. She's not going anywhere. I love this yep. cat. Yep. As a matter of fact, they were sleeping together earlier today. There you go. So, <laughs> somehow our lives have this twisted Twizzler parallel going on. What you should have done, yeah. Beastly, here's here's pro tip. You see that kitten, you smash it with something, and you say, "Hun, there's a dead cat out there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
That's called animal abuse. That's called I mean, murder. Right? I That's wouldn't do it. Murder, yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't suggest <laughs> anybody else do it, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know yeah I'm don't saying. walk outside and smash the first cat you see. That was a bad idea. Yeah. Oh, I honestly shit. love the kittens. I mean, they're running around the house now, and it's like they're so fun because they're, they're so playful. And they like hop up in the air, they're like, ah! And then. Yeah. <laughs> That's adorable, man. Well, I love well, kittens. As somebody who's had cats and dogs in the past, cats are much easier to maintain. There's no potty training. They go straight to the litter box. At the age of those kittens, though, they might have a little difficulty learning and remembering. But this cat came straight in, straight to the litter box, said, hey, this is where I take a shit. This is it. Cool. I was like, wow. <laughs> it takes a lot longer to fucking train my kids. Someone in chat right? said, podcast is not sponsored by PETA. <laughs> no, that's After we talked about just killing a kitten. <laughs> Just I'm, just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm a. I'm, right. I like to talk tough, but I'm a fucking teddy bear. <laughs> in, all, in all honesty, you know, I can't resist. Your last name is Rabbit. <laughs> Come last, on, we know. The first cat that showed up, my wife was like making phone calls to have the thing, you know, bring it to the. Because this is the same kind of thing. It was a rescue cat. It was outside. We brought it inside. It took us like six hours to catch the fucking thing in like the middle of winter. Jesus. My wife, the next day, my wife goes to work and she's making calls to the Humane Society to get it, you know, put in there. And I'm sending her pictures of the fucking kitten, like, running around on my shoulders. That's the wrong <laughs> like, thing to do, guess bro. Guess we're keeping it. <laughs> Cats are awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, ho hopefully it's only for the next time we do our show, Briar. Good yeah, luck, right. my friend. Mm -hmm. We got two dogs, too. I mean, this place is a fucking zoo. Full Jesus. house. Yeah. Yeah, We're well, outnumbered. The animals have outnumbered us. Hell yeah. They're taking over. <laughs> yeah. Skynet's gonna... No. Animal Skynet. All right. Should we wrap this one up? Yeah, man. It was a great show. All right. It was a good show. Thank you guys very much for watching. And uh, thank you. YouTube guys, thank you guys for watching. We got to start getting this thing on iTunes, man. We got to work on that. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we got a the, few uh, episodes up, but that's only if they want to hear about the looming release of PlayStation 4 or something. Because that was some yeah, old school shit. Ago. It was a long time ago, yeah. PS4 will be out next week. I'm super excited. Can't wait, man. <laughs> All right. One terrible. Thank you guys One very much for watching. We will see you next week at same time. Peace. See ya. 1.8 teraflops of power? <laughs>